have a 2,500 foot roll of two inch and uh, this is what they're gonna use to run underneath the road and this is poly. So Sullivan's, the company that's near us that does boring, laying pipelines, all that kind of stuff, they're coming here in about 15 to 30 minutes. They should be here soon. And then they're gonna bore underneath the county road so then that way I can get my water across the road. But anyways, I need to move this roll over there and sadly I don't have the trailer that you can put this roll on and it'll just roll itself out. It'll be here later today. It's just how it worked out. I'm just gonna have to make do with what I have, so. Anyways, things are gonna go well. Use the case steer, move it over there. As I was driving the skid steer over here, I got a call from Sullivan's and uh, they're at Town Pump, which is right in town, and they're going to be out here in a few minutes. So I got the roller ready, and then what we're gonna do here is we got a county road that we're gonna bore underneath. Now on each side of the county road, there's gas lines. There's a gas line right over here. It's got a little flag on it, and I kind of exposed a little bit of it. I got permission that I could start slowly hand digging to make sure I don't do anything so I can locate it. And then, on this side, I don't have to be concerned because there's a gas line uh, quite a ways over there, so it's not going to be a problem. But they're going to bore underneath this county road at least six feet to eight feet down and uh, pop the hose on each side, and then I can trench it in from there. So it's going to be good. Well, they just showed up. We talked a little bit kind of what's going on so they can kind of have an idea of what I'm looking at doing. And they're like, no problem. We'll make it happen. That's sweet. Love it when I hear that. So he's gonna go ahead and back the truck up just a little bit so then he can drive into the field. He'll unload the machine, get it ready. And the best part is, is they brought a little uh, cart to put the uh, roll of pipe on so we don't have to manhandle everything and make a mess of it. So I'm excited about that little doohickey. So if you look closely, this is the bit right here. It doesn't look like a bit, does it? What's neat about it is it's got kind of a spoon shape. So when they're boring straight, it spins and it shoots water out the front. So it kind of softens the ground. So if you want to go in a straight line, it'll just spin and they keep shoving it in the ground and it will go. But if you want to go into a different location, let's just say if you want to go to the side, it will automatically stop at a certain point. It shoots water, but then it uses that spoon to start directing the pipe and it keeps shoving it in. So they've got a little sensor in the front of there that tells exactly where it's located so they can direct that thing wherever they want. So it's basically like a rudder, like this. So they can cut around and then if they want to go straight, it just spins around. When they want to turn, it cups. Pretty impressive. It really is a very impressive idea. It's fun to watch too. here when it's ready it'll take one slide it in connect it slowly turn and shove it in and then when they run out of it they add another one and it just keeps adding them and you just keep shoving underneath and then when they're ready to pull it out they just pull it out take one out 
take one out, and they just keep stacking it. It's pretty awesome. And this command center, this captain chair looks pretty comfy. So he's marking on the ground where the pipe is going so he knows in case there's anything that happens, let's just say the pipe shears, we can dig up right there and retrieve the piece that broke. Because that bit that's on the front of this thing ain't cheap. I don't know the price, but it is not a cheap bit. So they don't want to lose that thing. That'd be a bad day if they did. So anyways, he's marking it out and making it happen. Each time he spray, sprays a little bit of uh, pink goo on the ground, that's 10 feet each section. So when they keep loading their pipe or their rod, now they know how many rods they've gone through and they can count that to see how many feet they've bored or the machine should have a digital readout and kind of get an idea, I think. I don't know, I'm learning this as I go, so I could be wrong, but impressive. The top of the road here was down 13 feet and you're like, holy crud, you don't need to go down that far. Well, you're right about that. But the thing is the top of the road here then goes way off into the ditch quite a ways. Same thing with over there. So when they're trying to get underneath down this point and that point, so it doesn't freeze on those two ends, it's 13 feet here. So I'd say that's deep enough. Now the bit itself has a little hook, so as you can tell, they just hook onto the pipe and then it just pulls it right through. It's pretty sweet. So he's gonna start it up and start pulling through. And once he gets it through on the other side, we'll cut this end, unhook that end, and they're done. And then later I'll come over here with the backhoe and dig it down so that way we can access, um, access the about six foot down roughly, and then we can splice onto the line and keep running in that direction. So fun, cool, I'm excited, this is fun. Okay guys, it's all done. They're gonna be out of here, heading back to their next project. They got a couple things going on, but we got it ripped, or not ripped, but bored underneath the road. And uh, yeah, this is sweet. Now more work. We just love to work, that's all we do. Okay, it took a little while for us to locate some of the gas lines. We finally located them. A uh, guy came out, we dug it around, figured out where it is on that side. That being said, now what I can do is since we bore underneath the counter road, right over here, of course, 
it's all marked off on a line where this line goes. So I have to dig down six feet alongside it and then expose this line so I don't rip into it, lay it in a trench and go all the way out there to where that gas line is uh, exposed. And then I gotta go underneath the gas line about two feet from the gas line below. That way it's not gonna be a conflict. So using this beautiful, wonderful Ford 655, this thing's a beast. It's a cute little thing too, but it's getting it done. So let's dig some holes. made an oops moment, uh, not something I'm proud of, but it can be fixed. When I was trying to scratch right here at the very surface, just barely raking some of it off, it's like, oh, I'll do one little more pass and I'll be good. Well, my tooth in my bucket caught the pipe. I was too close. So I creased it pretty good. So what we'll have to do is we'll cut that section out and we'll fuse it back together. Um, not a big deal, just kind of inconvenience, but things happen, right? So that is actually six and a half feet deep is where I've cut down to that part where it keeps going and it'll go down to seven feet, but I just need six feet deep for up leave for the whole entire water line. So I expose this line down a little bit and then when I'm ready, I'll pick it up, lay it in the trench after I fix this little oopsie moment and then lay it all over, put it underneath this gas line that's over here. Gas pipe is right down there. And that's a, I think it's a four inch pipe. So I gotta cross that and then this part, rip it over to my homestead or soon to be homestead. That's all that matters, soon to be. Sweet, all right, I gotta go to a soccer game. My daughter's gonna play some soccer, so I gotta quit. And that's good, because family's first, right? All right, I have plans for the 600 Big Bud and also plans for the 620 Case IH tractor. It'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see what it can do but we're going to see if I can lay my water pipe six feet deep. This ripper here was built by a couple farmers near us and they put in a ton, ton of miles of four inch pipe. So we asked like, hey, what you doing with it? And they're like, uh, nothing right now. You want it? And I'm like, yeah. So what I'm going to do and what Nick's going to do is we're going to put utilities in to our house locations for future house builds. I know it's the crazy, crazy thing that we're going to try to build homes. It's terrifying at the same time too, but nothing against the trailer house that we have. I would just like to move out of a trailer house and uh, get into a normal house. Family's growing and uh, it would just be very nice. So it's all, it's all happening. A lot going on, but we're, we're excited to see what we can do with uh, two fairly beastly tractors. And I don't know, this ripper's gonna probably put them through its pace. I don't know if it's gonna be able to do it, but I'm pretty hopeful because the problem we're gonna deal with is traction. Yeah, we have a 50,000 pound tractor with a 65,000 pound Case IH 620. It's a lot of weight, but the problem is, is if these tires start spinning, you're going to start loosening up the soil and we've got to make a couple passes. So it's going to be crazy, guys. Let's go do this.
there we go. First test. So, normally this ripper is pulled by a D8 cat and then a couple, I think D7s, D6s in front of that. Well, you don't have a horsepower issue. We got the horsepower. What we might have is the weight issue. He says he likes to have about 120 to 150,000 pounds to pull that ripper. We've got about 50,000 and 65,000 or so. So like what, 115,000, so we're a little light. But we also got brand new tires on everything, lockers on the Steiger. So it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. <laughs> we'll talk more about the Ripper in a little bit, but it's a neat machine. Benjamin's, Harry Benjamin, legendary Harry Benjamin, the one that made that model Big Bud. That's his, that's his brainchild. Pretty cool. now is he's actually just pulling my tractor. Um, I've got it neutral so that way we keep the tension on the cable. We're gonna see, without disconnecting the cable, we're gonna see if I can just back up, put it back in, and rip. Worst case scenario, we just have to disconnect the two tractors. I set it in place, get it ready to go, and then um, we hook it back up together. But it's such a big cable, it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to put back together. So we're gonna see what happens, but that was a good solid three feet as it turned out. Uh, we're gonna see at least we can go five, six feet deep or so. Um, but yeah, it's working out pretty good. <laughs> the very last little stretch, um, I popped it in neutral because my hydraulic line popped off and I couldn't raise it out of the ground. And my dad, he just kept on pulling me. Like, I, this tractor wasn't even doing a thing and that Steiger was just pulling it. So that's, that's pretty sweet. But when we get a little deeper, it's gonna, it's gonna make him snort a little bit. Maybe not snort, but we're going to be spinning. First attempt, and they backed it up perfect. Is that perfect, Roy? Yeah, because I was given the directions. <laughs> Roy is a master. If you guys didn't know, Roy actually is a classmate of mine. We uh, we got to know each other in eighth grade. We both graduated three years early because we're so smart. Yeah. We had some debates about twin rotors back then in eighth grade. I remember that but okay, that's an old story. Down. They don't do twin rotors anymore, right? Yeah, I'm trying to work here. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, Roy Farm's about 15, 20 miles from us. So he's on his grandpa's place and uh, it's been fun. He's a good guy. So you've got to do multiple passes. You can't do it all in one. We're going hopefully up to six feet. Goal is five minimum for the frost line. You got to put water lines down that far in this country. Otherwise the frost can freeze your water line and then you're in big trouble. But to do this, you got to do three passes. So they do one at four feet, one at five feet, one at six feet. Five feet. The issue we're running into is traction. And he said that'd probably be an issue with the uh, wheels. But the cats, big old caterpillars, they don't have much slip. 
but the tire, if you go over the same spot multiple times, you turn it to a powder, and then you start to spin. Right now we're doing okay. We just gotta get three. Three balls. Three. The fourth one will lay the pipe.